and welcome to this episode. It's going to be on the front crumple zone and the steering. Now this uh, video is going to jump backs and forwards in time quite a bit because the steering was started a long time ago, uh, putting the wheel in and stuff, to now when it's actually working. So let's jump on first. We're going to look at the crumple zone and we'll start with some CAD stuff. So here's a uh, simulation of my front crumple zone. Now the crumple zone has to take an impact, absorb it, and send any of the force uh, away from the cockpit of the vehicle. So that's why I've incorporated these um, purpose bends here, and it's only in 25 mil tube, so it should bend out of the way um, a lot easier. Some people go to the extent of in those bends, they can drill a hole through them so it's a weak spot and it, you know it's going to crumple where you want it to crumple. Here we go, what I've done is actually gone and bent this uh, front part, sort of the nose of the crumple zone. It's going to sit approximately here and you can see that I've left these bits longer for the bending so they're going to get cut off around here somewhere and then mounted in here. Now to mount it we're going to get it in the central position and get it all level and, and true to the car and then make some rails that are going to go down and bend back into the tube of the car. And I've made these wee um, end plugs for the tube, so that there will go in, into this here, I can weld that in there, and then the other end obviously won't be this tube, but it'll be the same size as this tube, and it can slide in there and we'll bolt it through. So if we ever uh, do want to pull the front crumple zone off, we can, and um, there might be things under it we want to get to, or we might want to change it, or it might get buckled. So, just future-proofing that to make it a little bit easier. So uh, what I've been working on just at the moment is sort of the steering of the vehicle. I've got this sweet Momo steering wheel uh, placed pretty close to where I want it. I've just drawn up some brackets and, and made a cardboard template for some of that. Add that to my CAD drawing at some point. And I've got a quick release in here and Garage 5 sorted me out a MX-5 boss kit because this is a front of a MX-5 steering column. It has a crumple zone here, so in an uh, impact, if that gets shoved, it doesn't go into the driver, it crumples in here. So that's quite nice. I've also uh, gonna kink this part out on an angle, and because that's greater than 10 degrees, if the car gets an impact in the front here, it shoves that shaft across instead of going into the driver as well. So that's just, we've got both things going on there. 
And this is my manual steering rack that I've got in place. I've also uh, drawn up the templates to bolt that in. And I just need to get them cut and done. This part here, uh, I'm going to have to make a short shaft in between, if you can see, in between this guy and that one. So I'm going to have to cut splines on either end. I haven't done a lot of that, so that'll be uh, another learning experience for me. But that's all good. So now, um, from that cardboard template, I've made this bracket that is going to slot in here and hold our steering column in place. Now, on the extra steering column, there's these slotted holes, and so I've done sideways slotted holes on the bracket. So that just gives us a little bit of adjustment to make sure that we get the, the steering wheel nice and centre and lined up. So that's going to go in there like that, and then it's going to be reinforced with some plates. One here, sort of, that's going to sit up there. Oh, it might be that way there actually. That one there, yep, like that. And this wee one here just goes up the side here. And it should look quite smart and be real strong. Still a wee hole there, so you can still get in to do your nuts up. Right, so now we've just jumped over to making the shaft. Now those extra wee stubs on the end of the shaft is just to hold it in the mill. Now it's quite an interesting process. So what we did was we took a stock um, spline and put this carbog on it and then cut a profile section from it. From there we were able to put it in this projector and project it up really big on the screen so we can get an accurate angle of what those teeth actually are and the number of them and everything just made it easier to blow it up bigger like that. So from that then I had to start shaping a tool out of tool steel and I have the angle set on a um, angle finder there and as you can see it's really hard to uh, get it in the center but as you can see my angle matches the angle of the teeth on the original spline. It's important for that because I wanted this to be the perfect fit being a steering component it's the last thing you want to fail now the reason I had to make my own shaft like this was because uh, you're not allowed to do any welding uh, or any type of joints in a steering column shaft and uh, that made it a bit tricky but now we're over at the mill and this is the uh, mill running down the side chopping it out here it is slowed down so you can kind of actually see what's going on. There's my tool in there spinning around and I just moved it in and out and then rotated it, in and out, rotated it. Uh, there was 36 teeth per end. So this took a few hours. And this is a divider head. It's what I used to uh, get the spacing correct between each teeth. So then when it came back to the start, it had the 36 teeth and the um, tool then would perfectly go down the next or the first um, groove knowing so then I know that I've got the perfect spline all right back home now really happy with that effort on on this shaft don't know if the camera will focus on it but I've got all the splines cut nicely and as you can see with the universal the fit it's just nice and I've got a little bit of uh, play there to go in and out because I'll get it in the car and work out exactly where I need to file a little sort of slot like that that the bolt can pass through there and that also helps stop the spline just sliding out to make it so it doesn't just flat round I'm going to use one of these uh, home joints rose joint or rod end whatever you call them I was going to pop it straight through this hole but I'm thinking a plate coming off this ledge here might be better and then having a nut top and bottom and I've got a little bit of adjustment um, to where it wants to sit where it's happy and um, should be nice and strong and have the angle that we want up there so I'm going to go now make a plate up and get that on there and see if it turns. Okay, I haven't really got any of the bolts in, but I've uh, 
got that wee bracket made tacked in and I reckon it should steer now just bang the steering wheel on so I can give it a shot thought I might as well film the first time just in case it breaks it might be quite funny It's looking awesome. I'm happy with that. Really needs wheel alignment, but uh, it seems to be working good. So now I'm going to truck on, weld that out, and then hopefully the steering's done. It was such a nice day. I couldn't help myself but get pushed down the driveway so I could feel how the steering felt. For the first time, it was a huge achievement for my build and uh, has really motivated me to uh, push on and get this thing closer to being done. I had no brakes, which uh, made it interesting, but I didn't go off the track too much and uh, had a good time. Thanks, everyone. Heaps of exciting things happening at the moment in the background. Going to be coming out soon, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. <laughs>